all fucked up and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Our next incredibly talented and luminous performer is a lot, another alumnus, alumni or alumnus? What's the feminine? Alumnus? Huh? Alumna. Alumna? Okay. Uh, son Marion. Please come forth and share your beauty with us. Thank you, son. The first time in my life that I ever saw double rainbows was on the day that I met the love of my life. I figure at the time that it was my spirit guides because they have this way of bending light when they want me to pay attention to something. At this time in my life, I'm a young adult, I'm on the rebound from a failed love life from a community called Carista in San Francisco in the Haight-Ashbury in the late 80s. Now, Carista is famous for inventing the word compersion, which means the opposite of jealousy. They're also famous for inventing the word polyfidelity which is an opportunity to practice compersion. <laughs> it's just like monogamy, except with a lot more people. <laughs> Imagine dating all of your lovers at the same time instead of one after the other. And then imagine all moving in together in Haight-Ashbury. And then imagine doing a very intense San Francisco startup. That's what it was like for five and a half tumultuous years. <laughs> well, we were very idealistic. We were very sincere. We were very committed to not becoming our parents. <laughs> but <laughs> after five and a half years, I was done with my alternative community and they were done with me. Mm -hmm. So I was telling myself, right lifestyle, wrong people. So after our very amicable group marriage divorce, I am dating a bunch of new boyfriends and hoping to find a bunch of new soulmates. When one of my six boyfriends takes me to see a movie called Sneakers, which is playing at the Kabuki Theater in San Francisco. And hosting a premiere party at this movie is Mondo Magazine, which is a very cool art, tech, and psychedelics magazine that's very popular at the time. And I am at the party talking to a new acquaintance. I'm handing her my business card. And this guy with a video camera comes up to me and videotapes me and my business card. <laughs> well, the woman I'm talking to turns out to be his Tantra teacher. And she introduces me to Alan Lundell, who is a staff writer at Mondo Magazine and who is the techno shamanic editor. <laughs> so I learn that the two of them are planning to host a Tantra workshop walking distance from my house, which is on Lake Merritt in Oakland. The next time that I see Alan Lundell, I'm attending that Tantra workshop. Yeah. Now, this is my first brush with the Bay Area Tantra scene, and it's a bit challenging for me because the first thing they want you to do is have everyone pass a giant strawberry using only their mouth. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> I pass the strawberry with my hands to the next person. <laughs> um, it's not all bad, however, and I make some new friends, and there's beautiful music being played on a homemade ocarina and a beautiful triple chambered flute, and 
we close our eyes and our German Tantrika guides us into a beautiful visualization and meditation. So I'm beginning to relax and two circles are formed, women on the inside, men on the perimeter, and we pair up for, with a partner for eye gazing. And two minutes later, we get a new partner. Oh, okay, I get it. Tantra is like speed dating, except without all those awkward conversations. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, the next exercise is yab yum. Yab yum is sitting in lotus position in each other's laps. It turns out Alan is my partner for yab yum. <laughs> I see him sitting cross-legged and I dreamily now remember that there was a golden aura of light around him and I'm thinking now my spirit guides were at it again. What I can tell you is that I am magnetized to his energy and I just love sitting in his lap. And uh, I think this might be the first time that Alan actually remembers meeting me. <laughs> he has often told the story of the first thing that he remembers me telling him, which was something along the lines of, I don't have time for any more boyfriends. <laughs> I guess he interpreted that to mean that I was thinking about when he and I could maybe make a date. Well, um, what I only learned about much, much later from the story, again, that he told is that he had a very discreet boner the moment I yapped on his young. <laughs> Well, it's been 27 years since we met, and uh, Alan has outlasted all of the other six boyfriends. <laughs> At first, he gave lip service to the idea that we were going to create a non-monogamous, let me try that word again, a non-monogamous family together. But every time that I went out with another guy, he acted completely miserable. And if there were any other prospects that we thought might work out for us, it turned out that they were looking for a soulmate that was not us. Well, after all of the other boyfriends and prospects fell away, we decided to let go of the idea that it was a group thing. It, turns out that my motto in relationships has always been, it's a honeymoon or it's over. And after about 14 years of mostly honeymoon, we decide to buy a house and get married in Santa Cruz. <laughs> I was really surprised that life could get any better at that point because it was so good. But something in Alan really softened after we got married. It's like a certain feeling, a fear of abandonment disappeared and it dissolved into a really cozy happiness that I didn't even realize was missing before we got married. So, <laughs> After 14 years of pretty much honeymoon all the time, we uh, uh, invited everyone we knew to the most epic wedding on New Year's Day 2007. 200 of our closest family of friends, many of whom are even here now, uh, came to um, what could be described as one of the most amazing love fests that Santa Cruz has ever recorded. <laughs> and I do mean recorded. There were six 
of our buddies who are either professional or very good amateur videographers and photographers. So we may have one of the most documenting weddings of the new millennium. And uh, there were golden minstrels playing music. There were there was a goddess who called in the four directions. We drank from a sacred chalice. We honored all of the traditions of love, ancient and modern. And the spirits rejoiced. And overhead, a message for all the world to see. Double rainbows. Yeah. Happy Valentine's. <laughs> Damn, I missed that wedding. <laughs>